And my role on behalf of the board to congratulate Curry and to welcome everybody to, the, uh, to this evening. There are two reasons why Kharif is doing such a, such a marvellous project and doing such marvellous work. The first is that the Jewish refugees from Arab lands are the forgotten victims of the Arab-Israeli conflict, and indeed the forgotten victims of 20th century Jewish history. 20th century Jewish history is unfortunately hugely traumatic, and I've just come from watching a terribly traumatic film about the fate of Lithuanian Jewry. But the fate of the Jews from Arab lands has been overlooked. And that is terribly unfortunate, both for the sake of those the people who lost, who lost everything uh, and were expelled from countries where they and their ancestors have been resident for millennia, but also politically, because people don't recognize the wrong that was done to the Jewish people in the wake of the creation of the State of Israel. But the second reason why I'm delighted to be, uh, to be here and to welcome this event is that it's also a celebration of the, the Sephardi communities and the communities of the Edot Mizrach. And they are so much a part of the Jewish story that it's something that an Ashkenazi like me really, really welcomes. I have uh, two Sephardi uh, sisters-in-law. And one is actually not really Sephardi, she's Taimani, and the other one is Iraqi. And their traditions are rich and diverse. And the, we Ashkenazi have so much to learn from them. It's something that we overlook today, that in the Middle Ages, 90% of world Jewry was, in fact, Sephardi or Shaq And they have traditions which go back right millennia to before the destruction of the Bayat Shani. And we have an awful lot to learn from them. And to a certain extent, the traditions of the two communities are so closely intertwined that it is really very much, uh, I mean, I was brought up to pray in Nusach Sephardi. So there's so much that they have in common and so much that we can learn from each other. To see it celebrated positively is a wonderful thing. To see the important political point being made is also an extremely positive development for us. So I'm, I really want to praise all those who've been involved with, um, with this project. Um, I, I think Lynn may go into more detail about the people involved, and I'm a bit concerned that if I mention some people, I'll overlook others. Uh, I do want to mention two people at the Board of Deputies who've been involved, and I don't, um, Edwin Shuk is not here this evening and has worked so hard for Kharif, uh, and with, they had great champion, the, the Jews from Arab lands had a great champion at the Board of Deputies for many years in uh, Percy Gorgi, uh, who's much missed. And their tradition, the tradition there is so important, and so important to us Jews as one people, that it is a great pleasure to be here tonight, and I'm delighted to see such a good attendance. My name is Lynn Julius, and on behalf of my organization, Harif, <laughs> uh, we're the UK Association of Jews from the Middle East and North Africa. I'd like to welcome you all tonight to this very special event. Uh, thank you to the Board of Deputies for organizing this with us, to David Walsh, Michelle Huberman and Ralph Assor, who worked very hard to make this event possible. And of course, the very helpful museum staff. Thank you to them. Some of you are here tonight because you've been involved with, uh, with Harif uh, through our nine years of existence. You've been to our talks, or you've even helped organize them, like uh, the Spyro is here. Um, or you've given us practical help, like uh, Adio Moran, uh, or financial help, like David. Um, uh, some of you are refugees yourselves, or the children of refugees, or some of you just want to know more. But as you know, we're here to mark the first ever day of remembrance for Jews from Arab countries, and Iran, I must add. This is a watershed moment. Like Holocaust Memorial Day, we hope it'll become a fixture in the calendar and that it'll enter the mainstream and each year it'll go from strength to strength. I'm delighted that the board appreciates how significant this is to restore the history of the Jews of the Middle East and North Africa to Jewish history. 
Uh, in June of this year, the Knesset passed a law designating a day in the calendar to remember the exodus of almost a million Jewish refugees from 10 Arab countries and Iran. As I speak, there are over 40 programs going on all over the world. Our friend Edwin Shukur is in Israel to attend a reception at the President's residence. There will be a Knesset plenary session next week and an event at the UN organized by the World Jewish Congress on the 3rd of December. Let's not mince our words. This exodus was ethnic cleansing. Nathan Weinstock, who we're honored to have with us tonight, puts it very well in his book, a catastrophe of unparalleled brutality and without precedent. 99.5% of the Jews of the region were driven out and only 4,000 remain. It's the greatest story never told. Let's not go into why it has taken 66 years to tell it. Let's just be happy that the Israeli government has now decided to tell the story. In fact, it is bound by a Knesset law passed in 2010 to include the Jewish refugee issue on the peace agenda. After all, over half Israeli Jews are themselves refugees or descend from refugees from Arab and Muslim lands. Why the 30th of November? Simply because that was the day after the partition plan uh, for Palestine was passed. The Arab world was plunged into a frenzy of anti-Jewish hysteria. Riots broke out in Aleppo, Syria on that day. Synagogues and shops and Jewish businesses were burned down. The riots struck Bahrain and Aden, where 82 Jews were murdered. Within just a few years, 90% of the Jews had fled Arab countries. But there is sound evidence that the Arab League was planning all along to victimize its Jewish citizens and steal their property even before Israel was created and before the first Arab refugee fled Palestine. This day is important because it will teach the world that the Palestinian Arabs were not the only refugees to come out of the Middle East conflict. The 856,000 Jewish refugees belong to communities that existed a thousand years before the Arabs. We want people to learn the truth about the refugees and the injustices and suffering they endured. As the human rights lawyer Erwin Kotler says, without remembrance there is no justice, Without justice, there is no peace, and without peace, no reconciliation. So we remember the bad times. There are those in this room whose relatives were imprisoned and tortured, or they, they themselves were imprisoned, their fathers executed, or members of their families murdered. We also remember the good times, the points of connection, between Arabs and Jews, 14 centuries of symbiosis. When the Jews left, the Arabs felt their loss even more acutely almost than the Jews did. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, they look back on that era with nostalgia. But when things go wrong for the Jews, they go wrong for everybody. A society that destroys its minorities ends up destroying itself. It's important to set the plight of Mizrahi and Sephardi Jews, and I would go as far as to say the Arab conflict with Israel, within the context of how Middle Eastern minorities generally have been treated. In the last few months, we've heard about Christians and Yazidis persecuted and forced to convert to Islam or sold into slavery. We at Harif have demonstrated alongside Kurds, Assyrians, and Pakistani Christians. 
we remind them that the ethnic cleansing began with the Jews. First the Saturday people, then the Sunday people. It's a salutary lesson. To survive as a minority in the Middle East, you need to be able to defend yourself. As one expert has said, the only difference between the Jews in Israel and the Yazidis is that the Jews are the Yazidis with an army. We've heard that the Islamic State jihadists have blown up the shrines of Seth and Jonah in Mosul. They do this because by blowing up our physical, cultural heritage, they erase our history. It's as if we never existed. I'm proud to say that I've been invited by UNESCO next week to represent Harif at a conference in Paris, and I'll try to make sure that the discussion does not ignore 2,700 years of Jewish heritage in the Middle East. Yes, yes. We don't want to return to Arab countries. In fact, we are counting our blessings that we got out of there with our lives. And as the daughter of Iraqi Jews, I personally am grateful that I had the chance to grow up as a free and full citizen in the West. And I think this is also true of uh, the majority of Jewish refugees who went to Israel. But we do want our rights. We want our rights to memory, to truth, and to justice. Thank you very much. <laughs>